Hey, my name's James Mellier. I work for Compost in New Zealand. I have roughly done about eight, nine years for them in this industry, in the waste industry. Just to give you a bit of background knowledge of myself, I've been around screening plants, specialised bits of gear, e.g. like mulches, big shaker screens, tromwells. I've worked in a bit of a diverse industry as such. What I'm meaning by that is around crushes, worked in the quarries overseas in Aussie. We do a number of ranges of products here, um, including topsoil, we do a lot of rock aggregate. So in the last couple of weeks, we've been, uh, we've got our K5 running here in the Wairapa. We're currently screening topsoil. We are taking the rock out of it and we've got a, we're doing another development on our site. So we're screening the topsoil out, then we're taking the rock and we're doing a development on our site to build up some of the areas. Then what we do from there, we, uh, we're putting lime down on top of that. With this sort of screen behind us, we're doing, we're doing a lot of bark, bark um, screening. Um, that's what it's dominantly here for, because we look after the mills in the Wairapa. We separate the different size grades, 25, 50 mil, then we separate the bark finds out of it as well. Then we also, behind us and behind the cameraman here, we've got our green waste. So what we do with our green waste, we compost it over the last sort of 12 weeks, then we put it through our, either our shaker or our tromwell. Now the K5 in behind us, um, as you can see, it's been an absolute great screen. We're also currently running a K4 with S3 stacker in the Kapiti Coast. When you, do one, when you do run one of these screens, you really want something that's suitable like a 25 tonner, 20 ton um, digger. You really should be running a stacker off it because of the volume of soil or ag that you do get off them currently. In this wiper branch, we're only running a wheel loader and a um, digger around it. Bit of feedback about the screen itself. Uh, Quip2 has uh, been actually really good to us, especially because they're only just across the road in the Wairapa there. Anything that we have from setups, from when we move a screen over here to where we move it around the countryside, we normally do a real good brief run for it, um, checking everything over, then what we also do, we get them to come check it over afterwards, just in case it's been, uh, it's been out on hire or it's been at a job site for the last two or three months, we just like to have everything prepped around it. Probably the biggest thing around um, these keys tracks, really user friendly to run. I've currently got about 10 guys to 15 guys under me. We have about four to five guys that really run these machines, but teaching them is probably the biggest thing around it. Teaching them how to use it, it's very, very friendly, like I said. Probably the biggest thing is teaching them about soils and eggs and the separation, what you're trying to get out of them. We're currently uh, getting about, uh, a thousand to about 1600 cubic meters of soil or ag or mulch for it but no nah, they're just a generally around easy user friendly machine as you can see in behind us we like i was telling you bef before we're screening topsoil um, but we want to separate the rock out of it now we're using the oversized rock as the ground base layer then basically the second grade that mid-sized belt that's coming out there's still got a little bit of soil in it but it's mainly a smaller rock which is about 60 and under then we're running a 20 mil slot mesh um, underneath. Probably the biggest thing, mate, is it's really easy to work on, really easy to grease. Everything's marked. You can stand up on top on the um, stand pad on it next to the shaker box, you know, make sure you're setting it up right. You've got a remote with it. It's, yeah, I just, yeah, you can't, you can't false, it, false it, really. Probably the biggest challenge we've had over the years with screening plants is they've probably been a little bit mid-size or or weathered sort of dependent on certain things. Probably the biggest thing is, like I was saying before, is teaching guys understanding how to run a shaker screen properly. So what I mean by that is basically if you've got a whole lot of wet soil, pulling the soil up, just don't go putting it through the screen. Teaching them about mulch. Mulch can act very differently over a shaker screen um, versus a tromwell. Um, like a tromwell might spike, then something like this, if you've got a lot of fibery material that's stringing up, is getting them to understand what you can and can't put through the shaker itself. Probably the biggest thing around these keys tracks is, like I was saying earlier, really easy to operate. Getting guys to use them is probably the easiest thing. Um, I've operated a few screens over the years and the Italian screens and the German screens are probably the still by far the best screens out on the market. Like the keys track itself, mate, 
our guys love using them. They basically say to us, we don't, we're not interested in using any of the other gear apart from the German or Italian gear that's around site. Yeah, that's probably the biggest thing if you're looking to buy a key track or any sort of shaker is look at what you're buying. And the servicing in behind it too is the biggest thing for us, that you just can't beat the guys in the workshop or their dispatch guys like Craig and Luke for parts or you know dispatching the mechanics out. Production wise on these keys tracks, we're getting a huge amount of volume through them. We used to run a slightly smaller shaker. We were roughly doing about 800 cubic metres a day on a good day. Especially with the keys tracks behind us, just being a big screen itself, big shaker boxes, what we're finding is our production's just gone through the roof, but what it allows us to do is buy bigger gear. So instead of having a 20 tonne Komatsu or a cat, we are upgraded them to like a 25 or a 30 tonne machine. But the biggest thing you've got to realise with having such a great, a big machine like this in behind us, is you've got to have the gear in behind it. For an example, on the Capiti Coast we're running a K4, with an S3 stacker and we're running a bulldozer in behind it. We have one Volvo wheel loader running around that bit of equipment too. It's roughly doing about four or five hours a day, if that, just, be just because of the, of the stacker itself. But the D6 makes all the difference pushing in behind it. Um, that is probably the biggest thing when it comes to production with these screens is having the material there ready to go with something that can push in behind the digger instead of the digger wandering off to go pull more to it. The difference between the K4 and the K5 for me, probably having the longer shaker box in the K5, you don't get that in the K4, it's got a slightly shorter shaker box in it, but the K5 just makes a big difference. Oh, one thing I have noticed with it is the power and the drive motors for the belts on the K5, just because you have a bigger volume of material going over the belts, is the actual power in behind it. The K4 is a really good machine still, we can't falsify that either, but it is a little bit down on production compared to the K5, but in all fairness, it's uh, great machines. So probably in the last few years, we've dominantly started to use the same equipment time in and time out again. For an example, we had, we've got one, we've got a K4, then we've gone to the K5. We probably wouldn't look anything else in the future in all fairness. Also a little bit like our Tromwells, we only stick with one brand. It'd be also like our wheel loaders, we sort of stick dominantly with Volvo and Cat. But at the end of the day, you couldn't have beat Quip too with their pricing and part servicing and the quality of gear that you're getting off of them. Probably the, also the biggest thing is, you get a wander over to their work and they have a real fruit ice cream over there. Old Bert will actually get out, the salesman will get out there and serve you one. So, yeah, 